Hey everyone, I'm Laura. I'm Spencer, and we're Married with Board Games. When I was a boy, I liked trains a lot. Don't ask me why, but I even had a conductor's hat and a train whistle. But I've never really found a train board game that really brought me back to the way I felt in my childhood. And then we were introduced to Whistle Stop, a two to five player pick up and deliver game from Bezier Games. And we were curious how this one stacked up to the other train themed games like Ticket to Ride. Let's head over to the table and give you a brief overview of the game and then we'll tell you what we think. Here's Whistle Stop. Now I've put everything on the board uh, just to show you uh, what, what you get with the game. Uh, initially you start with just a frame uh, for the board and then you, you fill it in as you play. But to begin with, there are some rules that show you what tiles need to be over here on the end of the tracks, what goes here in the middle, and what you begin with. There are some very specific rules on how to do that, but it is randomized still on, on how you set that up. I'll get into the tiles here in just a second, but first what you're going to do is, is you, you select a color and then based on how many people are playing is how many train cars you're going to get. For example, in a two or three player game, you get to use all five trains. And when you begin, you'll get to place your trains out over here on this side, uh, wherever you want to start basically. You'll take turns placing those uh, with each player and you'll just, just put them there based on where you want to start. Essentially, the goal is to get your train from one end of the board to the other. Through that journey, you'll be acquiring resources. You're going to get stock in certain towns. Um, you'll, be getting, you'll be gaining points in, in various different ways. I mentioned resources. That's what these cubes are over here on this side of the board. Green is whiskey. Red is cattle. Blue is steel. Brown is lumber. Gray is gravel. And white is cotton. As you move your train around the board and you, and you stop on those specific stops, like this one for example, you will gain one cube of those resources. Everybody will have one of these player boards that will show you your different actions for the game. I'm going to take a couple of these pieces of coal and one of these whistles to show you what, how they work. Spending whistles and coal is the way you're able to move your train in the game. For each coal that you spend, you can move to the next stop. As long as it's moving forward or up and down in the same column, you can never move backward by spending a coal. How do you move backward? Well, that's where the whistles come into play. If you spend a whistle, you can move backward and you can also move two different stops, including moving over a train that's in the way. If you don't have a whistle to spend, you can easily be blocked by an opponent who's in your way on your track. So here's the player board. As you do an action, you can do up to four. You place the token that you're spending on those numbers just to show that you've used them all. And then when you're done with your turn, you'll dump them out and then uh, dump them back to the supply. To give you a better look at those, those boards, uh, again, here are your spaces. You can, never, you can never hold more than 10 resources uh, in your train. And then also, this reminds you at the end of your turn to refill your hand after uh, you, you put down those tiles. What's gonna happen is as you move along the track, so say I started here and I spin a coal to move, as you get to an empty spot, you're gonna put down a tile. Now everybody will have a hand of these things, but uh, just as an example, if I put that there, I can put down this tile right here and my train will continue to move. It'll stop there, I will get a white cotton resource. I'll show you some examples of these tiles here. Um, this one, is for the St. Louis Express, St. Louis, however you want to do it. If your train moves onto this space and you spend a, a steel and a whiskey, you're gonna get, you're gonna get 10 victory points and you get a stock tile for that, for that train. Those are another way you're gonna get points. Is based at the end of the game, based on whoever has the most and each one of these stocks is gonna get a certain number of points. However, if you land on this and you don't have those resources to spend, you lose three points. So it's real important to make sure that you've picked up those right kinds of resources and make sure you deliver them to that space. This is just a close-up version of those down there. Um, again, if you move on to this, this space right here, you gain that resource. And then um, you can plan ahead, try to plan ahead based on how you lay it, uh, showing the direction that you want to go. Here's an example of one without uh, those stops. So lots of variety here in the types of, of tiles that you can play down. So you're going to be filling in the board as you play and then finally what one of your goals is to get your train to the other side and here there's just some big winners here as far as points go. So if you move your train onto one of those ending tiles and you deliver a cattle 
a, a steel or a whiskey, or not or, all three of those things, you get 25 points and you can move your, your, your tracker up 25 points. I'm just not, I'm not going to do math, I'm just going to move it. Um, but again, if you do not have it and you land on that space, you lose six points. And then if you move your train there and you deliver that, you can retire it to the train yard and get a one-time bonus of one of these spaces over here for those resources. In this instance, I'm going to get two free coal and one wood. Some of the tiles let you gain gold. And so you'll get some of these gold pieces, and they all have a value. At the end of the game, uh, that's how many points you're going to get. Um, these are random, so some have more points on them than others. You'll notice that some of these end tiles have a great deal more points to them than some of the others. For example, this one's 25, but this one's only 10. Well, here's why. Gravel, cotton, and wood are all more common than whiskey, cattle, and steel. And so if you can find those more rare resources, they're worth more points here at the end of the game. Some of the other tiles you might see, here's a trading post. If you land on there, you can train, you can trade resources at, at the, um, the trade rate on here. And then there's a whistle factory right here. You can get a whistle whenever you land on it. Uh, coal yard, if you land on the coal yard, you can get some more coal. Finally, the last thing I want to draw your attention to are these upgrade tiles. Again, based on setup, you're going to put a certain number of these out based on the number of players. Uh, but uh, you can gain these and instead of an action, as one of your actions, you can spend the resources, so in this case, to gravel. And then uh, you can get this upgrade that you're going to fit onto your player board like this. It's like a gear and it fits in there and you can have up to three. From now on, on your turn, as one of your actions, you can pay one coal to get two coal in this instance. Uh, some more examples are pay a coal to get a gold. Uh, what does this say? Another player must pay you one of those resources to leave a stop where you move a train, where you have a train. This over here is the round tracker. You're going to set up and put a certain number of these, either whether it's the coal or the whistle, based, again, based on the number of players. And so you'll start up here at the top. So in a four-player game, you'll start here and fill these all in. And each round, you'll remove them and, and divvy them out to the players. And then once you empty all of these spaces, the game is over. You calculate your points based on those bonuses, like from these stocks, from your gold, from your gears, from your upgrades, and whoever has the most points wins. Well, there you have an overview of the game, everything that comes with it, how it works, how it fits into the gameplay. Let's get to talking about it. Um, I think that this is a very well done production. Yes. Um, it's a good quality game. I like um, the the artwork, the, the style. I think what I'm trying to say is, is the color palette okay. of this game. It's not your traditional red, blue, green, yellow. I like that it's more of a pastel color. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it fits the, the, the style of the game. It's kind of a muted, not like energetic, do, 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 you know. That's how I explain things is with sound effects technical <laughs> terms. instead of words. Um, it's, I don't feel like it's, it's a real like in your face kind of game. Mm -hmm. And so the colors aren't in your face. Well, um, I think it goes with the theme. Um, something that it, it kind of gets lost. So you have to remember that this, you're trying to make your, your train famous. Mm -hmm. You're trying to have the most famous train. And, yeah. and um, when you were in a certain time period that trains were crisscrossing the country still and, and there were famous trains if there were any. It was Thomas. like a carnival. Thomas. I'm He's the most famous Casey, train of all. I was thinking Casey Jr. I don't know who that is. Casey Jr.'s coming down the track, coming down the track, coming down. Or Chattanooga Juju. Sure. The Pen the Pennsylvania 6, 5,000. How about that? Okay. Okay. Um, so, it kind of a carnival atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's something these colors make me think of. Oh, it's, okay. it's a carnival, um, big celebration, kind of circus-y atmosphere. I like that. Now, uh, <laughs> I didn't think of it. Bezier did. <laughs> Way to go, Bezier. <laughs> Now, um, so we talk about how it looks, and then when, you, when you're putting it out on the board, for me, maybe it's just because I haven't had enough practice doing it. We've played it, you know, we've played it several times, but, and I'm, and I'm shaving off the time every, every time we do it, but I think the setup time is a little bit longer than I like for the game. Yeah. The last time I clocked in in about 11 minutes, and it's, it's, it's not that, <laughs> I did, I timed it. it. Yeah, it was like the, in the, a Christmas story when Ralphie's father goes to change the tire. Time me. Yeah. 
The, the first time we did it, it was 20 minutes. So I did, it did, I did shave off quite a bit. But um, it, you know, if if you if that's not a big big thing to you, then no worries. But for me, it was a little bit lengthy, just putting everything out. And there are specific requirements about which tiles can go out, and you've got to figure those all out. And and so there are some things you can do to kind of prepare for the next time you play, whenever you put it away. Um, but just keep that in mind that the, the setup time is a little bit long. Mm -hmm. um, and then since it's not a board and it's just a bunch of hexes, how did what do you think about that, like putting the hexes out? Um, I mean, I think it's okay. I feel like if you, because you don't really concentrate on making solid columns. Right. And so sometimes they don't fit together so well mm -hmm. just because of that, of some person's going way out over here. And um, they're kind of just touching on one flat side. And then somebody comes along and puts one next to it. You're gonna get a lot of jostling. Yeah, and so tiles moving around. Yeah, so it is a little bit fiddly. If there uh, was some to... way that the tiles had some kind of groove in them to lock them together better than just a straight edge hex, mm -hmm. um, I mean, because they don't have to be straight edge, but right. Yeah. Again, that's just something to mention. It doesn't really take away from our enjoyment of the game, right. but just something to mention. Um, I like speaking of enjoyment of the game. I like how quick the turns are. They are. Um, especially if you don't have coal or whistles to do four four actions. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of the times you can only do two. And and it's just as simple as move your train, get your resource, and then sometimes if you're start laying a new track, you put that down. But really each thing you do on your turn is, is pretty quick. So I feel like the game moves moves fast, right? It it does move fast. Um I like on the side the uh the turn, mm -hmm. the thing, that, the kind of timer almost to the game to show you how many turns you have left. Yeah. Um, that helps you keep those things in perspective of, I only have this many turns, um, or I only have this many actions, and I've got this many turns, so maybe I need to save some actions to right. use later. Yeah. Because you don't have to use all those resources on right. your turn. You can exactly. Use, you, can, you can hoard them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so which sometimes I did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Uh, but but speaking of you know it, with it being quick turns for a two player game, this game was forty minutes for us, mm -hmm. which the box says seventy five minutes. But for a two player game, we got it under under forty minutes. Well, and, even, and in a three player game, I think it was maybe an hour. Was it an hour? Even? If that, yeah. I don't think it was even an hour. Yeah. So it and it didn't even feel like that. Like it 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 moves so quickly and very smoothly, and I and I really appreciate that. Um, what do you what do you think about the different ways to get points. I guess let me rephrase my question. Do you feel like there's a lot of yeah, different... Yeah, there wasn't a question. <laughs> there, there wasn't a question. Do you feel like there's a lot of different ways to go in getting those points? or? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Part of that is determined on what tiles you pull out. Right. Um, some games we've played, there have been a lot of opportunities to get those stock certificates. Mm -hmm. And then some games we've played, there are not. Right. Um, so... You have to be paying attention to those kinds of things because personally, I like the stocks. Yeah, I like going for stocks. But the last game we played, there were two different kinds of stocks that never even showed up. Right. Ever in the game, mm -hmm. and then um, the others, there was only maybe one place to get them. Um, whereas there's, I believe, there are usually multiple. Yeah. Places to get them. Yeah. And, um, so that you you do kind of have to be. You have to pay attention and, and be ready to shift your strategy of, all right, this needs to be more about collecting gold or mm -hmm. um, getting the right kinds of resources for the end of right. where, where I'm going to retire my train um, when you get those bonuses when you go to those tiles. Well, yeah, and, and what, I do, what I do appreciate, it's not simply about the pick up and deliver. It's not just about, you know... Here's some goods. There's some goods. Mm -hmm. You do, like you said, you gotta get the gold. You gotta, you gotta really manage those stocks that you have. It's not just about having one. You gotta have more than your opponent. Those stocks, you know, those play a big part in the end game scoring. They, oh, they definitely mm -hmm. do. And they're also a way to get points when you retire a train as well. Right. Um, but uh, not only get the most, but get there earlier mm -hmm. uh, because the lower the number on the stock, the better your chances are of winning a tie. Right. Well, and you said it a couple of times that you really do have to pay attention. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to what the other players doing. Yeah, which way you can even go. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, man, uh, 
it, it, you may not even be concentrating on it, but you can end up getting blocked by an opponent. I had, was not paying attention to which way I was going and totally got blocked. And I don't know how many rounds I waited for Spencer to move that train, and he wouldn't move it. I wouldn't move it on purpose. He wouldn't move it. <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> right. And and through our plays, I got the sense that, that I was enjoying it a little bit more than you. Can you touch on maybe one or two reasons why you might not have enjoyed it as much as I did? Maybe just because of the... Um, um, the route building, mm -hmm. uh, that's just not my forte. And so I feel so overwhelmed when it comes to uh, building a route, especially because so much of it is dependent upon the players. There's not much out there that you just build off of mm -hmm. as the build <laughs> route. <laughs> you just, you know, there's already predetermined out there and you just go on to that. No, we are building the route mm -hmm. um, and you want to make sure you're doing it the correct way and again the how few of actions you have I, there have actually been times that I've hoarded my resources my coal and my whistle so much that it got to the end of the game where I finally had my train in a position okay I'm gonna be able to do all these things I've got enough coal um, I've got all of the resources I need in front of me to finally get all of them and then get to this spot this spot to spend them but I didn't have enough actions mm, to do mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, those kinds of things are just not my forte. So maybe I just need to play it more to practice those kinds of things. Um, that's just not the way my brain works. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Some games are for some people, some aren't. And I, you can't I like force it. Battle. Yeah. I like war. So. And and I've learned my lesson. I won't force the game on Laura. If she wants to play, she can play it. But because I like battle. She likes to battle, <laughs> which means she'll battle me and not in the game kind of way. I'll get a punch You're in my face. You no, sound like a terrible wife. She's a wonderful wife. <laughs> uh, I've never been hit before in my life. So at least by her. No, not by me. Maybe our four-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're wrestling. I I will say one more thing before we wrap this up is that one th one more thing that I do appreciate is that it doesn't really get bogged down in mechanisms. Definitely. Like like for you, the thing that you're getting stuck hung up on is like the kind of like the choices of which way do I go, what what do I need to do. <laughs> but as far as mechanisms go, it's a very straightforward game, and it's very simple in that, and and it's very um, you know I I like that. I do, and, and there's not just a whole list of different things that you can do. It's just, how do I want to do it, mm -hmm. right? And so it's that's one of the reasons why I think it's such a smooth, smooth running game. Mm -hmm, definitely. Whistle Stop is a well-designed game that offers choices that feel meaningful and outcomes that are rewarding, especially if you can become the most famous train company in the country. We haven't played a whole lot of train games, but of the ones we have, Whistle Stop ranks at the top, and for me, Whistle Stop is one of the best games of 2017 so far. This is now my go-to pick-up and deliver game. And while I don't feel as strongly about Whistle Stop as Spencer does, I do appreciate the design of it and can see why he likes it so much. It just happens to not be my thing. With both of those thoughts in mind, we give Whistle Stop an average score of 8 and a seal of excellence. Thanks so much for watching this review. Check out more of our reviews right here on the Dice Tower's YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.